Hi, this is the Epic of Gil and Ennis, uh, an adventure game with dice and cards for one to two players. It's a game about two best friends who suffer a traumatic event and choose to run away from home and spend a week wandering through the wilderness, having dreams and gaining insight or worry before finally climbing uh, this dreaded Mount Humbaba here on the cover uh, and confronting their dreams and nightmares. Okay, so here we are with the game already set up. Um, we've got our map card here, which is where we'll be uh, moving from night to night and tracking our progress in our adventure. We've got our two character cards all set up here with the inventories, uh, which is dice in the game. And then over here is the dream deck from which we'll be drawing every night. Uh, we've got a little um, player aid here, which shows us uh, the setup instructions on one side, and on the other is the order of the rounds. Um, throughout the game, you're going to be moving through uh, four, four phases. The hike phase, pitch phase, sleep phase, and finally break. And each of those phases has a couple of um, steps to them. And then the bonus card will show you that on the map there are certain special um, steps, special areas that you can use um, special actions every day on them, once per round. Okay, so let's move back here to the game. So, as I said, we have things set up. Each, uh, each character is assigned um, five inventory supplies, and that's done by rolling the dice and uh, putting them in your slots. Character cards have um, five slots on them. You have your hand slot, uh, three backpack slots, and a pocket slot. Um, each slot is considered adjacent to every slot at the next level. So for example, your hand slot would be adjacent to all three backpack slots, and your pocket slot likewise would be adjacent to all three backpack slots. That'll come into uh, matter in a little bit when we're organizing our supplies. Okay, uh, each of the characters has uh, two special abilities, one ability that can be used once per round, and one ability that can be used once per game. Okay, so we start here with the character piece on the home slot, and the first thing we're going to do on the first turn is start with uh, the hike phase, and the hike phase is fairly simple. You just follow the track on the map card along to the next destination. So here we are at our first campsite, and we're moving to phase two, which is pitch. And pitch means that we, uh, having hiked for the day, we're now setting up our camp. And the first thing we do as we pitch is we can take special campsite actions. Remember I told you on uh, this card here that it shows you which sort of special actions you can take each night. The correspond to symbols here on the map. Not all campsites have special actions, but uh, some do. And uh, this campsite we're at uh, tonight doesn't have any special actions, so we don't do anything there in the first step of the pitch phase. The second step is using character abilities. So as I said, our characters have abilities that are once per game and once per round. So we can take these, uh, we can take these special actions now. Uh, Gil has a special ability, Bushcraft, which allows uh, them to increase the value of one backpack die by one. So they can add one to one of their backpack dies every day. Ennis has a special ability that allows them that once per round they can re-roll their hand die. So they can re-roll this hand die once per round. These things become in handy as the game goes along when you learn. The ultimate objective is going to be to save enough supplies to match the challenges that Mount Humbaba will have in store for you. Right now the only challenge is this th worry level of three here. So I want to make sure that I keep one die with a value of three to the end of the game right now. That's going to change. Um, so that's why you want to manage the levels on your dice as well as meeting requirements of dreams every night as you'll see in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to raise the value of this die to four using Gil's special uh, action ability once per round. So I've gone ahead and done that, and Ennis, I'm going to re-roll this hand die, which is one of his special abilities. Oh well, I got a six. So I put that in my hand, and uh, now we can organize our supplies, which is step three of the pitch phase. Organizing supplies means that you can swap two die of uh, adjacent levels, or 
um, later on when you start missing supplies, you can move one die from an adjacent level to another. Like so, moving a die from my pocket slot into my backpack, or moving a die from my hand down into my backpack, or moving a die from the backpack into either one of those areas. Right now though, our inventories are full. Uh, so our organized supply action would be to swap two dice of a different level. I'm fairly happy with where everything is right now, um, so I'm going to leave that. And now we move on to the next step, the sleep step. Um, sorry, sleep phase, and it has two steps in it as well. So now we set up our tent and we're settling down for a night to sleep in the wilderness. And the first step of the sleep phase uh, is that we're going to select who's going to dream. So each night we're going to encounter dreams in the wilderness and those dreams are going to teach us things or give us more worries than we started with. Um, so we need to decide whether we're going to dream alone, whether Gil or Ennis is going to dream, while the other one keeps watch, or whether we're both going to sleep and dream together. At the same time, you have to make one of these selections. You can be planning to stay up all night and not dream. Um, which, as you'll see, will be a certain strategy at some points in the game too, where you want to throw dreams and fail at them in order to mitigate some of the worries. So looking here, I see that Ennis has a lot of sixes, which are good for dreaming alone. Um, and they don't have a lot of low values, meaning uh, three or lower, which are good for dreaming together. And that's something important to note as the game goes on, that high values on dice, good for dreaming alone, Low values, good for sharing and dreaming together. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Ennis is going to dream alone while Gil uh, watches over them. And I know I can do this because whoever is standing watch has to have a hand die equal to or greater than the current worry level. The worry level is 3 and Gil has a hand die at level 3. So he can watch over Ennis while Ennis is sleeping if uh, Gil had a hand die of two, he could not stand guard. And Ennis would have the option of maybe standing guard over Gil while they were sleeping. But as it stands, uh, we have this hand die value of three here, so we're all good to go ahead and dream. So we've chosen a dreamer. We're moving to step two of the sleep phase, which is to resolve a dream. First thing we're going to do is draw the top green dream card here. And I'll bring this into focus for you so you can see it. So here's the uh, top dream card of the dream deck. It is a dream I'm having of a bull charging towards me. And the spot I'm going to look at, there's a lot of information on these cards. Um, and I'll break it down for you as the game goes on. But all we need to look at for now is this section. This little character tells me that this is the dreaming alone section. And in order to dream alone successfully, we're going to have to pay certain costs. And the cost for this dream to be a success is a die value of 5 or greater and a second die value of 5 or greater. And so I have those dice, which I... can go ahead and pay here. So I'm going to take this 6 and I'm going to take this 6 and I'm going to pay those to succeed at this dream. Now, the dream is a success. What does that mean? Well, I gain an insight because I've had this successful dream, and the insight on this card is belief in the impossible. So I've gained the insight of belief in the impossible, which allows me, during the pitch step, uh, to flip one backpack die. So this insight means that every round during the pitch step, I can flip any one of dice any one of these dice that are in my backpack. I can make a 6 value of 1, a 3 value of 4, and so on. And the way that we indicate this is by um, just sliding this card right underneath my character card so that I can see the insight and nothing more. Good. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen now during the resolve dream step, the dream is success. Now we adjust the worry level, the current worry level. The worry level during a successful dream is going to go up by two if you're dreaming alone. So the die value of the worries, the worry level goes up to five. Now, if I was dreaming together and it was a success, the worry level will only go up by one. But because it's dreaming alone, 
it goes up by two. Well, we gain worry here because I'm the only one that had the experience of the dream and I can't properly explain it to Gil. And so our worry increases. Okay, we're done now with the resolve dream step. We move on to phase four, the last phase of each round, which is break. This is where we pack things up, we eat for the morning, and we gather any supplies before hitting the trail. So the first step of the break phase is to eat. And you eat from your pocket. This is where we keep our food. And to eat means to lower the value of the pocket die by one. So my four value goes down to three, and Gil's three value goes down to two. Both characters have to eat each round. Now, here's a couple of little tricky things. If this value is at one, when I go to eat, I'm going to lose that die. So I would eat, and it would go over here to a dice pool. Um, so it takes a little bit of coordination that you don't want to be losing dice this way. Dice are very important to the game. So you don't never want to leave a one value in your pocket when you're about to eat, if you can help it. Uh, the other issue would be if I go to eat and I don't have a die in my pocket, which will happen, maybe I spent it during the dream phase. If I go to eat with an empty pocket, the other player, the other character can choose to share their food with me. So uh, let's say we're going into an eat phase right now, so we're going to eat step, and Ennis doesn't have anything in his pocket. Well, Gil eats one for himself, and then can choose to share his ration with Ennis. So this die disappears entirely, meaning two points have to be eaten every round. If at any point you go to eat and both characters can eat during the eat step, the game is over. Okay, let's put this back in here. So I was down to three, two, and uh, three. So that's the eat step. Let's move on to the final step of the break phase, and that is forage. Now, if you've dreamt successfully, either alone or together the night before, you're able to forage. If you fail during the dream step, uh, you can't forage. You're too tired to forage for supplies. Foraging just means drawing a die from the dice pool and rolling it. Oh, and here I've rolled a one. Now, you can add new dice to any character with open inventory slots, no matter who dreamt the night before. Now Gil's all full up here, so I'm going to add it to Ennis' inventory. And all new supplies, all new dice, always have to be added in through the hand slot. So they go in here first. If a die was already in that spot, let's say this uh, die was already here, then the new supply would simply knock that die down to the next level, like so. Uh, so, there we go, we've added our, our supply, and we are ready to start all again from the top of the next round. So here we go, we're, we've moved on uh, to the next campsite and uh, we are, we've completed the hike phase, we're moving into the pitch phase, take special campsite actions. So this one actually has a special campsite action, it's a small uh, cube here, I'll show you close up on this card. So it's one of these first symbols here, which says that one character can reroll all or any of the dice in their inventory, adding back from the hand slot. Now this one says, uh, on the map, is an all. So with this uh, campsite allows you to do is any one character can reroll all their dice. Only one character can do it and they must reroll all. This is essentially akin to a mulligan. There's one chance to take a mulligan in the game. I'm fairly happy with my inventories right now and so I'm gonna leave them as such. So I won't take the campsite action. Actually, maybe I will just to show you how it works. So, Ennis here is going to take the campfire action. And I've rolled very similarly to what I already had. Now, these four dice are all going to be added in through the hand slot. Um, which just basically means that I'm going to fill up every slot except for my pocket. Okay. And uh, now we move on to the next step of the pitch phase. Use character abilities. So I can do Ennis's reroll of the hand die, or I can increase one of the dice in, in Gil's inventory. I'm going to go ahead and flip, uh, not flip, but increase this 5 to a 6 here. And Ennis, um, I think I'm happy with uh, 
No, I guess I, I'm going to re-roll the two, actually. Oh, and I rolled a five, which is perfect for what I want to do. Uh, I also have, uh, and this has this ability now, this insight, that allows me to flip one of my backpack dice. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm fairly happy with where all the backpack die are right now. So I use my next step here, which is organize supplies. Uh, I'm happy with where everything is going with Gil there, but I'm going to use Gil's um, organize supplies to make this move. Now again, you can only make one movement per character. You can't continue to shuffle supplies around. So you can make one movement of one die or swap uh, two dice. That's one movement as well. In this case, I'm going to move my die here from my backpack down into my pocket. And that's in anticipation for the eat step later. I want to make sure I have something there. Okay. So we've organized our supplies, we're moving on to the sleep phase. And again, here we're at the point where we have to choose a dreamer. I uh, see that Gil has these two sixes here, so I know that they are in a good position to dream alone. But uh, I think just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to show you how we dream together, just so that you get a sense of that. So let's say I choose now for both of these characters to dream together. I check to see, first of all, if I can match the worry level. The worry level's gone up since our first turn. It's at a five. And when we dream together, we have to collectively have equal or greater to value in our hand dice to the worry level. So Gil's got a three, and this has got a five. Together, we've got a value of eight, which is easily above the level of worry. We're safe to dream together. Okay, we've chosen our dreamers. We're moving on to resolving dreams. So we draw the top card of the dream deck, and I'll give you a little close-up view of this one to give the slow focus. Here we go. So we're having a dream of these shooting stars coming down to hit our campsite. And this time, we are gonna look up here at the dream together value. Remember down here, this is dreaming alone. The top here where the two figures are, this is the cost to dream together. This one is uh, it's a tricky one. It's going to tell me that I have to have a value of one or lower and a second die value of one or lower. This makes this probably the hardest um, dream together dream because they're very specific about the values that we need. Only a one and we need two of them. Okay, well let's take a look. I can tell you right now, I don't have the values I need. In fact, I don't even have a single one. This was very silly of me. Um, so I'm going to fail this dream, which is great, actually, because I can show you what happens when you fail a dream. So I don't spend any dice. I'm not able to pass. And what happens is my dream twists a restless night into a worry the next morning. And this worry, if you remember, insight at the bottom, this insight would have been moment of heroism, which gives us a chance to re-roll some dice in the last uh, final confrontation in the game. Uh, but now we're gaining this worry, feelings of insignificance. I have these every day. Feelings of insignificance. And this worry is going to get added to the worry that's already on Mount Hababa. And what it adds here at the end of the game, the final phase, is it will add a worry of one and a worry of five on top of what's already on the board. And I'll show you this when we get to the final phase. So to show where this, that we have this worry, we slide this in on top of the map card. And right now, we have three dice that we're going to have to contend with at the end of the game. A five, a one, and another five. That's what the worry's at right now. Okay, so we had a bad night. But still, we get up, we move on to our fourth phase. Oh, and I'm sorry, I'm totally forgetting here. Uh, we failed at the dream. We now have to also resolve the worry level. So you remember, you dream together, the worry level goes up by one. You're dreaming alone, the worry level goes up by two. But if we fail our dreams, although we didn't sleep at all, we stayed up, we talked about it, our worry went down a little bit, okay? Because at least we were together and we didn't have any of these haunting dreams. Um, so our worry level's gone down just a bit. That helps uh, mitigate the worry level throughout the game. Sometimes you want to fail a dream, maybe, so that the next night you'll have a die value that allow you to overcome the worry level. Okay, uh, we wake up the next morning, we break our camp, we still have to eat, so I'm going to eat here, and this eats, Gil eats, you'll see that Gil's uh, 
Uh, rations are down to one here, so we're going to want to deal with that next uh, next round. And then we would normally forage here. We would roll a die and gain it. But because we failed at our dream last night, we can't forage. So we move on to uh, the third day, the third morning beginning with uh, the hike step. And we move along to our next campsite here. And we go to phase two, which is pitch. There are no special campsite actions we can take at this point on the map. There are going to be some more later on, but at this point there are none. And uh, we can use our character abilities. This allows us to do some re-rolling um, and some increasing of die values. I'm, again, fairly happy with where things are at here right now, so I'm not going to use either ability. Uh, but I will point out maybe a good time to touch on that each of these characters has a one time once per game ability and this is a clutch hitter which once per game allows them to flip a die over uh, that means any die in their inventory and Gil has a once per game ability which allows them to peek at the top card of the dream deck I often end up using this in my uh, first or second uh, second round uh, because it sets up a strategy for the rest of the game depending on whether or not you can win some early dream alones or not. So both come in quite in, in handy during the game. Now where was I? Ah yes, I was here at the use character abilities. Now I'm going to look to see if I want to use my insight which is available to me during the pitch step. Do I want to flip anything here? Um, no, I'm going to keep everything as is just to keep things simple and I'm going to move on to organize supplies. I definitely want to organize some of Gil's supplies here because as you see, if I go to eat in the morning, I'm going to destroy this dice, this die right here. So I'm going to swap this backpack die with this pocket die, meaning I can hold on to this one for now and I'm going to move my six down here into my pocket. Okay, move on to our sleep phase and I'm going to choose dreamers. Again, I'm going to dream together here because I want to show you what a successful dream together is like and hopefully I will succeed this time. So I look at my um, my pocket and my hand dice values here, three and five, it's a total of eight, still higher than the four that is the current worry level. Again, you're only ever referring to the dice that are on uh, the map card. And uh, I am going to go ahead and dream together, so I'm going to move on to the sleep step. I'm already there. I'm going to move on to the resolve dream step. And here we have this dream of a bloody axe. Maybe we've hurt our, ourself or hurt somebody that we know, and so we're having this uh, terribly bloody dream. And again, you're going to look up here at the top part at the dream together cost. And to overcome this dream, you're going to need three dice. You're going to have to spend three dice. One of uh, two or lesser, uh, one of three or lesser, and one of four or lesser value. So this is actually a very expensive dream in terms of the amount of supplies you're going to spend, but not so hard in terms of, uh, of the values that we'll probably have at this point in the game. Uh, so, let's take a look. And I can tell you right now that yes, I will be able to overcome this dream. I have the necessary supplies. So I'm going to spend this four... I'm going to spend this two, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to spend this three too. That's in Guinness's, Guinness's inventory. So I spend all three of these dice. I've overcome the dream. Now, because we dreamt together, we don't get the insight. We're not able to agree on an interpretation of the dream, and so its meaning escapes us. So neither of us gain the insight behind it. It simply gets discarded. So it's not added to Mount Humbaba but it's not added uh, to our inventories either. And as a result, you can see that dreaming together is not always your best option, but it only raises the worry level by one. So the worry level doesn't go up by two, it only goes up by one. So there's a reason why you sometimes want to dream together as well. There we go. A successful night. We break camp, we eat as usual, and we're able to forge this time because we dreamt successfully a two. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to Ennis's inventory, which bumps this five down into his backpack. And I think there's just one thing I want to note here before we uh, we skip ahead to the final phase is um, the worry level. So if the worry level is ever at six and it has to increase by either one or two, you're going to add a second die. 
And the way this works here, we'd move the six over to this side. Let's just say uh, the wave level is at six and we, we dreamt successfully alone. It's gonna go up by two. And so we add a new die value starting at one and then it adds a second to it. And that would be now the new worry level, which is at eight. So when the worry level goes above six, you can no longer dream alone. Your worries are too much to be able to sleep at night unless you have um, your friend to sleep with you. Um, and so uh, you wouldn't be able to dream alone, but you would still be able to dream together as long as your hand values add up to be more than the current worry level. Worry level being at eight right now, I couldn't dream together. I only have a five, so I would have to reorganize my supplies or I'd have to be failing a dream the next night. If I couldn't meet the worry level at all, you automatically fail. If uh, the value is at seven and I were to fail at a dream during the resolve dream step, the worry level would lower by one, meaning I could bump that die off the map and uh, the current worry level would only be six, meaning yes, I could still successfully uh, dream alone. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's covered just the basics of it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump to the last phase and I'll be back in one minute. We've reached our last campsite. We've uh, overcome our last dream together. Along the way, I failed at one more dream and picked up another worry. And right now, uh, we are going to move into the final round. So you wake up the next morning as usual, you eat, you forage, I've done all that. And it's when you um, hike, you take that first step and you hike into Mount Humbaba right here, that things are gonna change. So what you need to do is take all dice off the map and your little player marker, you won't need that anymore. And you're gonna flip uh, this map card over to its Mount Humbaba side, which looks like this. And this has slots for uh, Humbaba's worries up here and player supplies down there. And here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna put this card right here in the middle of the table. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna activate all the worries in the Humbaba cards that are up here. So we had the six and one that we carried over from the map, remember? And then we've got some other dice values on here that are gonna be added now. So this card, Feelings of Insignificance, had a die value of one and a die value of five. And then at the top here, we had overcome with loneliness, which has a die value of three it's adding and it has an additional stipulation as part of the word that says, one character can't use any abilities during the final night. Oh, I'm sorry. One character can't use any insights during the final night. Insights, you remember, the powers that we gain from dreams. So one of these two players can't use any insights. Well, I'm gonna go ahead here and choose Gil, because Gil has no insights, and so I'm not losing anything. I'm being sneaky here and allowing Ennis to use the one insight they have. So uh, here's what we have to do now. This is the worry we have to overcome. This is what we've come to find at Mount Humbaba is, is uh, sort of the accumulation of everything in our journey. It's this challenge we must overcome so that we can go home and confront uh, the event that we left there, the trauma, and become better people for it. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, we have to match exactly the values on this the dice that Mount Humbaba has collected using our inventory dice. I only have five dice left. There are five worries in Mount Humbaba. It's going to come down to the wire here whether or not I'm going to be able to match them all. Now, I'm still able at this point in the game to use any insight abilities that tell me they're usable on the final night. And I'm also able to use any character abilities at this point even though it's not uh, a pitch phase, it's the final night phase, and you're able to use character abilities or insights that tell you you can use them to match. So I'm looking here at my dice, I can already see that I have some of these things taken care of. So I'm not gonna use any Gil's abilities because there are no dreams left to peek at, and um, I, it's, uh, other abilities to raise one backpack die by one value, but I can't do that because I have one backpack die already at six value. But I do need a six. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that in there and match that. Uh, and I also need a three. So I'm gonna take this die and put it over here. Okay, well, I'm two out of five so far. And I can see, wow, Ennis has got a one here and two fives. 
and I need two ones and a five. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this one. But I know I'm going to need this five, so let's go ahead and put that there. I know I'm going to need this one, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. My insight is only usable during the pitch phase. There is no pitch phase this round, so it'd have to be something that I tried during the last round. But Dennis has the ability to re-roll his hand die once per round. So this last round right now is going to come down to this die roll. Whether or not I can re-roll, uh, I can roll this into a one. But I also have Ennis's special ability, one-time use ability I've never used, which allows me to flip one die once per game. Now that would give me a two, so that's not useful to me. So what I'm hoping to roll here right now is a six I can flip to make a one, or a one. So here we go. I'm terrible. I've had terrible luck today, so I'm not holding hope. Oh, and I rolled a three, which I could turn into a four, which isn't going to help me. And so for this game, it came down to that one die roll. I just needed that one value. If I'd been able to accumulate some other insights, I'd have some other abilities here that I could use to manipulate dice values, which is really sort of the, the ultimate strategy of the game, is as you go along to be watching what's on Mount Humbaba, and at the same time, altering your dice as much as possible to hold some of those values um, in reserve for the end of the game, while at the same time, trying to overcome the dreams every night. And sometimes you want to fail those dreams, uh, and sometimes you want to succeed at them, depending again on what die values you're ultimately going to need. So in this particular trip, uh, Gil and Ennis uh, fail, and, uh, and they're not able to overcome their worries, and they go back home together, sure, but uh, things are a little bit different and a little bit darker for them. But hopefully not for you, and if you've given the game a try, I appreciate it very much, and if you have any questions, just let me know in the forum. So it's the, uh, the Epic of Gil and Ennis. Thanks.